All right, let's build a checklist. In this video, we're going to go over the various types of tasks that you can use in a checklist, how to set up their completion, and also we'll go over briefly how to publish a checklist. So let's jump straight in. I'm going to go ahead and click create a checklist. We're going to title this next gen, for example, <laughs> and click create. From here, the um, user interface will navigate me to a brand new empty state checklist where we actually get to get started. Mm -hmm. My computer's running a little bit slowly, so bear with me. All right, so here, of course, you can edit the name should you change your mind later down the road. And the first thing that we're going to look at is editing the content. And what you're going to see is an example of that as we build here on the right hand side. So we're going to go ahead and start with the header. Um, let's say let's so you can add a subtitle should you want to it just pops in here at the bottom now here are the tasks list first you can choose if you want this to go in order so a chronological checklist or if you want it to go in any order that you'd like so let's add a task to get started All right, so the first thing that we're gonna notice is it's true of all of the tasks that we can build. Each of them have to have a title, but your subtitle is optional. Let's imagine that we want, um, this is first task. Now my recommendation is always to give the title of the task a very clear call to action. So it is action-based and totally oriented around what their user is actually going to do. So if they need to add a payment method, submit an invoice, download a copy, whatever it is, that's what we're going to title it. And should you need to add further information, you can add that in the subtitle. Next, you have your task action. Do nothing is a very, very clear task type. Um, and the reason that we actually have these is uh, surprising. Um, sometimes you just need to tell a user um, that something needs to be done, but there isn't a flow that's tied to it um, or isn't there isn't an actual action that's given from this. They need to do it maybe somewhere outside of the application. So let's imagine um, that they need to install Zoom, for example. Maybe you could give them a website to navigate to to download that. So that would actually be go to a page and that would navigate the user there. But in some cases, do nothing is what exactly it says. The task title is there, but clicking on it won't actually do anything. And then you have your marked as complete. Oftentimes we pair the do nothing task to an automatic completion. Uh, to give the users their freebie task. We actually see a 30% increase in checklist completion when you give them a free task completed right from the beginning. Um, this is something like sign up for user pilot, for example. So it's already marked as complete because by the time that they see the checklist, they've already done it. So let's actually um, make that our very first task. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save so you can see what this looks like in my checklist. Next up, we're gonna add another task and we're gonna use go to a page just because um, it is the next one on my list. Uh, pretty self-explanatory here, you're navigating a user to a different page. This can be a page within your own application or it can be an external page. Maybe you need them to sign up for something, link their accounts, things like that. So all you have to do is add your destination. As always, we do give you the opportunity to add dynamic information here. So for example, if they have a host name that's specific to them, you can make sure that that host name is included so they can navigate directly to where they need to go. So let's use um, userpilot.com, for example, docs.userpilot.com. Um, of course, if you haven't navigated there yourself, it is a fantastic place to get information from Userpilot. You can have it open in a new window. And of course, this uh, completion is dependent on you. So either if they've simply landed on this uh, given page, it can be marked as complete or they can match specific events. And we're going to go over all of that in just one minute. So let's just use this as successfully landed on a specific page. Now, um, really quickly to go over this additional setting, this advanced can be marked uh, task as incomplete if the user no longer meets the condition. In a situation like this, this isn't probably very helpful because the condition is landing on a page. But if we use matches specific events, 
if they uh, needed to install something and then they uninstall it, if they need to enable something and then they unenable it, it can be marked as incomplete again. And you now have the opportunity to decide if you want a call to action label or not. So we're going to add one here just to show you what it would look like. So let's say, um, let's get you there. So now the user knows if they click on this, they're going to, oh, I have to add a title, of course, go to box or example. So now I'm going to show you in the preview what this actually looks like and what that call to action label is going to do for us. Give it one second to load, of course. So I'm going to switch this so that it doesn't have to be in order. And should I want to, just to give you an example, I can drag and drop the order of my tasks at any time. Now, obviously, first task and go to docs are not in the correct order over here. Um, this just needs a moment to catch up. But to give you a little bit more information on how to do this, you see that call to action here, take me there. As you can see, my uh, timing is lagging a little bit, but you shouldn't see this kind of behavior um, in yours once everything is live on production. So you've got your go to docs your first task is marked as complete. Now let's add a third type of task, which is our uh, trigger a flow. So that we'll call this flow. Now, if I'm triggering a flow, of course, it makes sense um, that you'll want to build this flow first. Some of my customers are always um, a little bit confused when they are looking for something uh, and they realize that actually they haven't put it together. So usually I like to make a list of the flows that I'm going to use in a checklist, go out into the Chrome extension, build them, and then I find them and uh, pop them in here. So let's select the flow from the list. And this is a checklist flow, updated flow. And if you need to add a URL, so if this flow is only set to trigger or start on certain pages, you'll want to do that. But if the flow can trigger on any page or start on any page, that's kind of where you'll modify this here. Or again, you can open this in a new window. And uh, same thing with the completion that we saw on the go to page. It can either be completed if they complete all of the steps in the flow or if they match specific events. So we're going to use this one to run, uh, to show you this example. So for example, um, sometimes a flow completion doesn't necessarily mean that a customer has successfully done the task at hand. So if I have a flow that my user needs to upload an, uh, an invoice, for example, um, perhaps just because they get to the end and hit um, import, that doesn't necessarily mean that they've done what they need to do. And I actually need that custom event to prove that something has been done. Or if I want to say add three team members, um, once they've added the first, it still won't be marked as complete because they need to actually add the attribute three team members there. So we're going to search for our events and you'll pass these in your script. You'll choose, you know, um, the custom event that you've included, the feature tag that you've added, or if it's an identification parameter, for example, um, here, let's imagine uh, I would have created document um, here and I can make that is true, for example, and then they go ahead and hit save. Now this event is going to only be marked as complete if they have successfully done uh, the task at hand. So um, pretty clear. I'm not going to create a task for the last one because I feel like it's pretty obvious. This is for script specifically. If there's something that you want to run or trigger in your own application, you can add it directly from here. And that is how we can actually set up our tasks in our checklist. I'm going to go ahead and hit, um, let's see, I think everything I have here is okay. We're going to go ahead and hit save and wait for my computer to catch up with me. All right. Well, what we're going to do next in our following video that we're going to tag on here is show you some of the, um, configuration settings and how to trigger these out. But I do want to just remind you a couple of great things here in your content. Like I already showed you, you can drag and drop and reorder your tasks. You can also choose how you would like to dismiss this content if you want the users to be able to dismiss the checklist. You can choose your checklist completion content. So if the user does finish the checklist, they get rewarded, of course, with some text. Um, and finally, you can, uh, like I said, choose if you want these checklists to go in a specific order or not. The widget 
is more customizable than ever. You can now modify everything in your widget to make it feel as native to your platform as possible. Uploading your own fonts, choosing your colors really specifically, even uh, modifying your buttons to make sure that they match what you're uh, going for in the rest of the application. And you can choose how you would like this to open. Configuration, um, as I mentioned, is something that we do in tons of videos going over how to trigger content. All of the settings are the exact same. Basically, you're choosing your domain, your pages, your audience, and your frequency. Those are the things that we're really thinking about. So choosing who the audience for these checklists is, is what's going to happen here on this specific page. And finally, localization. Um, when we get there in just a moment, I'll show you, um, is how you can actually change the language for your customers depending on their locales. So as we've seen here, you can choose your segments. All of this should look familiar because we've seen this in our resource center, our flows, absolutely. And if you have ever any questions on how to appropriately trigger a checklist, feel free to check out um, our videos on um, configuring flows or some of our documentation, or of course, just reach out to anybody on our team. And the most important thing I think that appears here is your frequency. Would you like this checklist to continue triggering until all tasks are completed? Or if they uh, dismiss it and they don't wanna see it again, can you have it trigger this way? Um, and of course, the last thing I wanna show you is here in localization, let's pop over. Localization is easier than ever. You'll probably again recognize this from our resource center because it is uh, built with the same framework. But basically, um, you can automatically translate based on the locales that you have in your um, settings down here in your configuration. But also, if you want to manually make modifications, you can do that here as well um, in your translated text. Be mindful that if you do auto translate, you will see all of the text um, auto translated here. And then if you manually manually type something in, it will override that automatic translation. And um, from there, you're good to go. All right. Happy building. Enjoy setting up your checklist. And of course, reach out should you have any other questions.